At 2,200 feet, and we started to smell smoke in the cockpit. Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. Skylane 91182 Mike, we've got smoke in the cockpit. We called up Republic and declared an emergency. 91182 Mike, need emergency landing. And we did not know for how long we had been on fire. Hi, my name is Jeffrey Chipotine, and the EI MVP 50 saved my life. Morning, Jeff. Good morning, David. On uh, August the 17th, 2014, my buddy David and I were northbound out of Farmingdale at 5,000 feet, bound for Poughkeepsie. Uh, David and I both have a lot of time together, lots of cross-country time, probably 10,000 miles at least. Avionics on. Circuit breakers. Circuit breakers pushed in. Prime. Primer in and locked. Niner 182 Mike, you are cleared for takeoff on runway 14. Y'all be safe, 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 safe. When the EI MVP 50 started letting us know that fuel pressure had dropped to 0 0.2 psi. A few seconds later, the fuel flow went to 56 gallons per hour. We're flying a six-cylinder Cessna Skylane, so neither of those numbers made an awful lot of sense. Uh, everything was running well. We had no indication of a problem other than the information that was being delivered by the EI MVP-50. This is a critical thing because we had previously had two other brand engine monitors that had constantly put out bad information and we had just grown so weary of them constantly giving us bad data we had finally decided to upgrade to the MVP 50. I mean do we do you think we actually need to turn around or? Yeah, pressure going down flow going up. I think we should turn around. Really? Yeah. Cancel the trip? Absolutely. I think we should turn around. All right okay let's turn it around. When we got these bad indications I thought was okay we've just got bad data coming through once again but because the MVP-50 had been reliable up to that point, we decided to better safe than sorry. And we turned around and headed back to Republic. Republic Tower, Skylane 9182 Mike, requesting a priority landing, uh, possible fuel issue. 5,000 feet, air traffic control was given alert that we may have a possible fuel issue. We were cleared back and we held altitude all the way through till we had acquired the airport. And 3,200 feet, we were turned over to Republic Tower. Republic Tower caught us. We had already requested a priority approach. And there was no emergency at this time. The engine was running fine. We were just concerned about the bad data. At 2,200 feet in the high right downwind, we started to smell smoke in the cockpit. Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. Skylane 9182 Mike, we've got smoke in the cockpit. Uh, in the right downwind to the base leg at 1,400 feet. Is that fire we've down got there? fire. Yep, we've got fire. We noted that flames had broken out inside the cockpit beneath the rudder pedals. Mayday, Mayday, we now have fire in the cockpit. Repeat, fire in the cockpit. 9182 Mike, need emergency landing. Emergency vehicles be advised. Aircraft will be landing on three feet. We were able to execute nice easy landing on runway 32. We turned off on the first taxiway which was a hard left about a 220 degree left turn and uh, 
that was fortunate in that it put the prevailing wind behind us, blowing the flames away from the exit doors. We were both able to exit the aircraft safely, and the fire truck, of course, started pouring foam on almost immediately. The entire underside of the aircraft was completely eaten away by flame through the gasoline that had escaped, atomized, and then blowtorched below. The airplane was a total loss. It has since been replaced with a V2. And uh, we're going to be installing an MVP-50 in that, as you might imagine. My name is Jeffrey Chipotine, and I fly EI.